welcome once again to this 10 minute word break. This is Youth Pastor Alicia Fields of Victory Fellowship Outreach Ministries based out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, where our pastors are, Bishop Gordon Fields Sr. and co-pastor Doretha Fields. I invite you to grab your Bibles and your Bible apps, and we're going to look in the Word of God. I'm going to ask if you would turn your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 30. Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16, um, and we're going to begin reading there. And it reads as such. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them. When thou numberest them, this they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is 20 giras, and half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And we're going to go real quickly um, now to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. And it reads as follows who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And I'm going to be speaking to you today from the topic of a ransom for many. And this is a Yom Kippur Day of Atonement uh, message, just a snippet of what I was able to share uh, with our local congregation on that day. So we're talking about the Day of Atonement. And its significance for us today is so why is it still relevant for the believer? Uh, why is it not just left in the Old Testament? And what value does it have for us today? So I'm just going to briefly uh, go over where we just read here in Exodus chapter 30 first. And we're going to get to that first Timothy scripture. So in Exodus chapter 30, in summary of what we just read, Moses was given very clear instructions from the Lord. He was told to take a census or head count of the children of Israel. And as part of this census, he had to number all males ages 20 and up. So um, how do we know this and why is that significant? Well, in the book of Numbers, um, chapter one, where it begins is Moses was told to take a census of all the men because these would be the ones that would serve as the army of Israel. So. Um, during Old Testament time, anytime a census was taken, it was often of the men. And so um, women and children were not part of the count. But in this particular census, it was not only inclusive of the men, but it was inclusive of uh, all these souls that needed to be counted. Right. So they began to count. And to find out how many are represented in this nation. So this census was done annually. And so not only was there a census conducted, but then there was specific instruction given. And so going back to um, this patriarchal society where the male, the significance placed on the male as the head of household and the head of his family, when the instruction was given on an offering was to be made as a ransom for their soul, it was the men who would give the offering as the representative of their family or the representative of their home. And so as part of this, they had to give what was called an atonement offering or a ransom offering. And so this was worth half a shekel. So half shekel was equivalent to about two days worth of wages that the Lord was requiring. And so the other specifics of this was that there was no distinction made between the rich and the poor. The rich gave no more and the poor gave no less. Everyone had to pay the same amount. 
And so the Bible says specifically in these verses that we read that this was to serve as a memorial to Israel that their souls were ransom. And so when we get to talk about ransom money, uh, we need to first look at the definition of what ransom is. To be ransomed or ransom is a sum of money or other payment demanded or paid for the release of a prisoner. And so we know that due to our sinful nature that we became slaves or in bondage to sin. And so in order for there to be a release from the sin, there was a payment required. And so in this period of time, that payment was in the form of daily and yearly sacrifices. What were these sacrifices? Well, they were offering up blood sacrifices of goats and lambs and bullocks. And so, but a part of the atonement, which was once a year, they were required to give ransom or atonement money, which was used not only as the memorial, as a remembrance of this covenant agreement that they were accepting this sacrifice that was being made on their behalf, but also this money was used uh, to upkeep the temple and upkeep, um, you know, just what was involved with the offering. So the high priest will come up once a year and he will begin to make atonement for the people, for all sins that were committed in the year. And so this was to be paid of every soul um, in order to be counted. Um, and it was an acknowledgement that they wanted to be counted in. Count me in. Um, I acknowledge and I accept this sacrifice that's being made on my behalf. But what we know as we jump to 1 Timothy 2 and 6, as I mentioned, this is just a, a quick summary here. But um, when we pick up, we know that there was this ransom that was to be paid. Well, that wager, that exchange or the cost or the value of a soul, that fee was still there. But the difference was when Christ came, he became the ransom. He paid the wages. And so uh, what many of us are familiar with is like a bail bond. Um, in order for you to be released, you have to pay bail. Uh, and so Christ himself, he stepped in and he became the ransom. So we no longer had to pay the fee because he paid the fee. He paid the ultimate price. And so that is what it meant in 1 Timothy 2 and 6 when it said he gave himself a ransom for all. And so the distinction was in that time period, each person had to give in order for the ransom to be paid. But the difference now is that Christ came and paid for all, regardless of who um, would accept the sacrifice, it was paid. And so this is the beauty of what Christ has done for us. He paid the atonement offering that would have been required of us annually and daily and where the priests were doing this on the people's behalf. And when he did this, it was a couple of things that happened. Not only did he pay the wage or the cost or the fee to release us from the bondage of sin, but also as we know, when Christ died on the cross, the Bible talks about how the veil was separate, the veil was rent in two. And the veil was significant because in biblical time, there was separation even in the temple. The women did not actually worship in the same court as the men. There was also a Gentile court and there was a court for the Jews. And so there was all this separation and division. So Christ came to pay the ransom. He also came to bridge the gap and to close every area of separation that we may quote Galatians 3.28, that there is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. So this is the significance of the atonement and why it's so valuable for us and relevant for us today that we would uh, celebrate and recognize as a memorial as to what the Lord has done for us. So we're not keeping it to be atoned because we've already been atoned. We are keeping it in acknowledgement of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. So we're simply coming up in acceptance of what he's already done and we're rejoicing and celebrating and that the ransom has been paid and so that is what i just want to leave with you today know that christ himself came as a ransom for many